Bienvenidos, señores y señores, to another episode of the Bleed Loans Podcast. This episode of the Bleed Loans Podcast is brought to you by betonline.ag. It's your number one source for all your basketball info, stats, news, and scores. Get the latest odds and lines, including the latest player reports for this year's pro basketball playoffs. Ben Online is always your sports information headquarters this season, as we have you covered on all your sports wagering needs, basketball, MLB, NHL, hockey, right to UFC and boxing. Ben Online is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card games you can play right from your home. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use your promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts. And joining us on the Candia Sada, I'm very excited about this because we've been wanting to have a conversation about Los Angeles street art for quite some time. And if you guys have been paying attention in the news lately, there is a gorgeous mural in the city of Bellflower that, uh, the city wants taken down and it's a mural uh baby face if you have the picture of the mural if you can throw it out so our viewers can see it for those of you listening on the audio portion you can go ahead and look it up but it is a gorgeous mural that has a lot of what i would say are probably los angeles icons in it vin scully's in it kobe's in it snoop tupac danny trejo and then on another side uh with Thanks for putting it up there, baby face. On another side is Oscar de la Hoya. But this is the mural that the city of Bellflower wants taken down. And this is a piece of art. And I don't understand why. Uh, I'll go into the details. But we have the artist behind this mural joining us on the show. Ladies and gentlemen, slow motions. Bienvenido, my friend. Thanks for coming on. What up? What up? Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. I appreciate you guys so much, man. Thank you for the love and everything, man. So, I, I mean, this is gorgeous. So, before we get into everything that's going on with the city of Bellflower, talk to me about this mural itself. Like, how did you come up with the the concept of this? Do you start small and then go big? Or did you know this was what the final uh, piece was going to look like? No, like, um, I usually start a lot of my projects we base off, uh, like, I base off pretty much, like, okay, who do they want done? What are we, Who are we going to paint? And then I kind of like freestyle my way in there, you know, like a lot of, and honestly, like I, doing that, like I have the freedom, you know, like um, going in with the flow. Cause sometimes when you plan stuff out, like it may not go as smooth. So like freestyling stuff, you just go with, with what you're feeling in the moment and it's better. And sometimes some of the greatest stuff comes out like that. So um, I think he wanted the um, Lakers and Dodgers. So we did Kobe and that, and then he just wanted like just them too. So, from there, I, I just added, I was like, you know, I'm going to just give them this project I've been thinking about for a long time. And then so, you know, once, once we started doing the faces, that's when we started to like put the Sixth Street Bridge. That's brand new, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. There's all the cultural things, you know, that we could fit in there. And, you know, the, the wouldn't be L.A. with all Mexicans is something I've been thinking of for quite a while, you know. But there was no set uh, design or anything like that in my head. You know, like I said, a lot of a lot of my projects are freestyled like they're, um, you know, like I said, I start with the face and then we just slowly start working stuff in and, and getting the feel for the wall. You know, like you get more of a feel for the wall once you're there and you're not looking at a picture and, and putting it on Procreate and setting it up. So, um, yeah, man, like um, it kind of like feels spiritual, man, when you like kind of freestyle stuff, like stuff just comes to you and you get a feel for everything. So, um, yeah, none of this was planned and I just the outcome was really, really dope. Just not the city's outcome. Uh, so what what came first that wouldn't be LA without Mexicans and then Danny Trejo or did you know you wanted to put Danny Trejo in that mural and then you added wouldn't be LA without Mexicans no we did the wouldn't be LA without Mexicans and then um you know it's always um you know then like with the Mexican culture you know it's like we're not there's not too many of us in the spotlight like that and and you know um we're, we're behind the scenes doing all the hard work you know um so you know like figuring out who to do and with the short space we had was just you know so 
the first was the, the that's why we put Tupac, you know, first was the, the quote, you know, which is a beautiful quote of bringing, you know, within that song, you know, it's the, the unity of, you know, blacks and browns and, um, you know, just, just unity and just a beautiful thing, you know, so, um, but yeah, we had limited space and I was like, we're putting Danny Trail and then we're going to put, um, um, you know, of course the Lotero at the, at the bottom and, you know, paying tribute to the, to the hard workers out there, you know, doing, doing it out on the streets, you know, cause it wouldn't be LA without that, you know, like the, you know, the Mexican vendors and all that, you know, so that was like a big thing to add to, you know, um, and then, yeah, of course, De La Hoya, cause I grew up like in the nineties when De La Hoya was the biggest, biggest name in boxing, you know, so, um, Yeah. So let, let, let me ask you this. Do you consider this type of art form political? No, hell no. Um, this is, you know, it's, it's it's something of unity and within ourselves, speaking within ourselves. There's no presidents up there. Like, of course, the, the city's going to make it try to be political, you know, but this is all like stuff people, all these people have done, you know, whether no matter what walk of life they came from, they came and they represented LA, you know, no matter what state they were born in or whatever, you know, they came representing LA and there was no type of political stuff going on. This is just, this was LA, you know, and especially the hip hop part, you know, like a lot of, I think like the city, you know, gets offended with stuff like that, you know, but it's like, why censor the struggle? Why censor the, the bad neighborhoods? And, you know, like, so there is, it's not that political, but, you know, the city looks at it more like that. And, um, but, you know, like, this should just be a representation of everything in LA with no censorship and, you know, no political censorship to it. So, you know, um, so, so for those of you listening or, or watching who aren't familiar with the story, technically the reasoning why the city of Bellflower wants this mural down is because the mural is facing a, a main street. And I guess they have an ordinance in Bellflower where those types of murals need to be facing a, another mural. It's interesting that you say that, uh, Slow, that they, they think of this as a, as a political uh, piece of art. And for me, I, I was always wondering if that's what really bothered them. Because other than Vin Scully, you got a lot of people of color up on this mural. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, I don't know, man. I like. It's, I, I think you know, it's like the rapping stuff and all that. But like, even when they had hit us with the, uh, you know, it's facing. I've been doing this for a long time, you know. So, um, um the facing the street thing was kind of new and you know i felt like that i don't know my opinion i feel like that was just something new and it's kind of like what like what does that have to do with anything you know so um, i think the people of color in there you know and is is was a problem you know so yeah so I, I know the, the the owner wanted you to do sports related, but you've done yeah. other mural. You have this beautiful mural of Vin Scully that you've done on his own. And I know a lot of Chicanos like really look up to Vin Scully. Like Vin Scully is like, like a homie yeah. to them. It, yeah, it, yeah, did you yeah. feel that same way? Or when they, did they ask you, Hey, we want you to do a Vin Scully one. Yo, the, the single one with him by yeah. himself. Yeah. Yeah. And while I, I wanted to do that too. So, you know, like I usually get like, um, urges like, okay, oh, oh we got to do that. So like, of course, when Vin passed and, you know, we had to do that, man. And yeah, and everyone wanted that, you know, like we had to do that one for the community, man. And like, no, everyone loved that one, man. So, um, yeah. But yeah, they, everyone loved that. That's a Chicano who hired me to do that. So, you know. So uh, the thing is, is if anybody sees this, you do this all with spray paint, right? Yes. Um, I'd say like about 95% of it is all spray paint. I do my little details with a brush. Like I do a little bit of brushing, but yeah, all spray cam. So, I, I mean, it's amazing to me because a lot of these murals of yours, they almost look like photographs. And for you to do that with spray paint, are you self-taught? Like, how did you get into, are murals the only thing that you do, or do you work on other canvases? No, yeah, I do canvas. I do airbrushing, tatting, and all that. But I I entered all this, you know, do graffiti, man. So, you know, like, I was a, you know, I was really into graffiti, still am, you know, like, you know, now, like, I, then I got in trouble for it, and I knew I couldn't, I knew longer, I no longer could, be putting up my life on the line to to do graffiti and put out art so you know i just knew i didn't want to let go of the can and i didn't want to stop spraying you know so i had to figure out a way to make it work for me um and now i have and you know like 
one thing I've always been is a perfectionist, man. So um, once I started doing faces, I started perfecting them more and more and more. And I always wanted to have the most. I wanted always, like to always like you know, trick people and be like, "Hey, you think that's a picture?" Like, no, that's a painting. I painted that, you know. So um, you know, and I got real technical with the can, and you know, um, yeah, man. Like, I just I started all graffiti and you know all the bad stuff, and you know, and that's why great things come, you know come from the concrete man you know like from the dirt man so you know like as much as people hate graffiti if it wasn't for graffiti some of these beautiful artworks wouldn't be here now for me you know so um you know and uh yeah so like i, I just really appreciate where i come from the background i come from to get where i got to do this you know i risk my life on the line um getting just to everything i risk my whole life and everything for for art you know so um being in jail for art and all that man going to prison for art um you know it just shows you how dedicated and how where my heart's at you know and a lot of people might look at as that like oh that's criminal and you know whatever that's not you know like maybe people look down on it but at the end of the day i look up to that man and like um you know i don't encourage it but it made me who i am today man and those the, that struggle just shows you where my heart is at that no law was going to stop me from putting out my heart to the world and you know nothing was going to stop me from being an artist you know so I went through it all, man, to, to get where I'm at today. So I'm happy that we're actually doing it legal today, you know, and everyone's appreciating it, you know. So it means that that means a real, it means a lot to me. I never thought I'd make it this far. So was this, does this go back to you being a kid? Like, what was your first inspiration that you thought, hey, I could do that. I could do stuff like that. Man, um, yeah, to me, a kid, I was always around, like, you know, the gang stuff and, like, you know, it's a kid's L.A., man, you know, like, you, you know, in the 90s, you know, out there was a lot more gang stuff. And, you know, the art was more, you know, gang culture influenced and a lot of stuff like that. So, you know, um, um, I was just always influenced, like looking up, you know, I grew up um, in Cudahy right by the L.A. River. So we, I would go in the river and see like all this amazing art, man. And, you know, I remember even we were talking last night with me and my buddy and uh, he was even asking me some question you know and he and i remember one time they took us on a field trip to downtown la and as we were going on the train i remember seeing it was around the time when like the up and smoke tour was out with snoop dogg and dr dre and i'll never forget man i we're we're on the amtrak and my my teacher was sitting next to me and he was a cool teacher we were it was like a continuation school so he knew how to deal with bad kids you know so he's looking at all the we're looking at all the graffiti it was we're passing and i go that shit's dope and then so we see a. I remember seeing a. I don't. I mean, I wish I knew the artist who did it, man. But it stuck with me. I remember seeing a Snoop with the afro with like lime greens. Like it just went with the tour and everything, and it it looked so dope, man. And I remember looking at my teacher and being like, I'm gonna do that one day. And you know, and that's crazy, man. I I I I I'd really like to see him again and show him what I'm doing now, man. And yeah, man, because it's you know I'm really really trying to master everything I do, you know, with realism and all that. So. Uh, but yeah, ever since you know the it, you know the streets always influence me. You know the hip hop and everything like that. You know, and it's you know um, beautiful, beautiful. A lot of beautiful things come from the struggle, man. And like the, from the ghetto and all that, whether people see it or not, man. And you always have, you always, you know, it, it's some of the most beautiful things come from the mud, man. So and you know like and that's hip hop, you know, and that's you know a lot of stuff like that. So you know that's where I come from, man. And that was my inspiration. And then of course you know seeing. But like, like the museum type of art is cool and all that. But yeah, like it was always like the, it was always the street influence. Like letters, letters were so awesome to me. How people could twist up letters and do all these things to them, and or even just do a face with spray paint. You know, it was just insane on a wall that it was not allowed to be on. You know, so um, yeah, man, it, it's that was my biggest influence. Man, is the streets. You know. Look, I, I got to tell you, you were extremely talented. I showed my girl that mural in Bellflower, and she just kept saying over to me, this is so good. This is so – and I told her <laughs> that you had used a spray can to make that, and she was yeah. blown away like uh, by that like because she was like, it, it's so lifelike. So, again, I want to – so our listeners are aware, you have not received any formal training, right? This is just you oh, all yeah. like practicing and just doing it over and over? Yeah, actually, yeah, my bad. I forgot to get, get out of touch on that subject. Yeah, but, um, yeah, it's all self-taught, man. Um, you know, I, you know, you kind of put everything together too with other mediums you work with. But yeah, man, I just remember just mastering. I remember, um, you know, um, 
I quit my job and I was like, I didn't want to work. I was like, I'm never going to work for anybody else again in my life, man. So I quit my job and I pursued this art stuff, man. And, and so I bought a, any chance I got, any money I got, man, I put it into spray cans and I would just practice and practice and practice and, you know, study the, the, the tips and everything and the misting and, you know, proper angles and all that, man. And so, yeah, like everything is self-taught, you know, um, you know, now there's more help. And, you know, like I, I come from where I didn't like people do grids, people use projectors and all that, you know, which some of that stuff, which I use the projector now, but like prior to all that, you know, I mastered the skill of not. So I used to just walk up to a wall, whatever we knew the wall we were going to do. And I would start with an eye and I'd work everything in from the eye. So, you know, I learned a lot of this stuff, like with no grid, no nothing. You know, I would just walk up, have a picture and just start. So, you know, I, you know, and that's what I always encourage too, man. You always want to be an artist. Like if you ever lose a tool, you got to be able to make up for that and just have that skill level, you know, and then that's, it's kind of like how baseball players have practice and train and all that. That's how you, I believe you should be training as an artist too, man. Because if you're out of state, you're out of country, and you don't have that proper tool, you better have that skill level. And you go back to all your, you, you go back to all your training. You know, if you lose any of that, you you have to go back to your training and think, okay, I don't have this tool, so I got to go back to the basics and boom. And you know, so you know, yeah, you got to always, in my my opinion, you know, you got to always be able to do stuff without those tools, man, and make stuff still happen. You know. And that's, you know, that's the artist part within, you know, the skill level and the talent. But, yeah, man, no, like, you know, of course, we always watch other graffiti writers do stuff. But I would I hardly would ever see people doing faces, you know, so that I wanted to learn on my own. And I always love drawing girls like, you know, kind of like, you know, um, you know, like sexy girls and all that, you know, especially in jail. You know, they all, you know, all their drawings <laughs> in there, you know, like, you know, girls, you know, some nudity and all that. So. When I had gotten out, when I got released, yeah, I was just like, you know, like I said, I once I got released from prison for all this stuff, um, I was just like, you know what, I'm just like, I, I want to continue drawing and painting girls. And I go, well, let's do this with a spray can. So, yeah, like people would give me their walls or whatever. And, and any chance I had, man, I would just spray and study colors and my tones and all that. So, yeah, man, it was, it's, it, it's uh, all self-taught, you know, but it's, it, you know, a lot of people like to call stuff talent sometimes, man. But a lot of stuff really isn't, man. It's all those, it's all those years I put in, man. All those years, you know, of studying faces, studying uh, shadows, studying lights. You know, so it's you know a lot of people call it talent, man. You know, which talent does, you know, go so far? But it's always that hard work as well, man. And I just was determined that I wanted to be an artist. So yeah, it's pretty much all self-taught, man. I mean, I I am so impressed. I, I gotta ask you, uh, do, do you think? Do you look back and saying this art form helped you survive that time in jail? It kept you motivated to like when I get out, this is what I want to do with the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah honestly, um, it's really it's it's a really really crazy question, man. Like, and crazy story about everything, man. And um, you know, I've always um. You know, with me and a, t uh, a tagger in, in jail too, and so well, they, they, it used to be more. There used to be more problems back in the day, but um. So you know, when I went in, you know, I just knew like you know it was always gonna, you know, you're always gonna bump heads, man, and there's always gonna be some. So you know, it helped me stay out of trouble. You know, constantly drawing, and then once every time I would go in, you know, everyone's always like, "Man, this was bad." You know, like, "Hey, can you do our our kids' cards? Can you do my family stuff? Can you do my tattoos? Whatever it may be, you know." Um, but yeah, like I just remember, like you know, um, you know, in the darkest points in your life, man, you come close with God, you know. And um, I remember that was some of the, you know, I didn't think I was gonna make it out, you know, and um, just the way things were going, and I just had a really like bad time, you know. Um, and you know, I believe God put me through that to give me that change and give me that, you know. So I told God, I was like, man, you get me out of here. Um, you know, I'm going to change, you know, I'm going to fucking, I'm going to do something right with, with what you gave me, man. And I'm going to, I'm going to encourage the world with it and, you know, and, and bring back to the kid and do everything I could with it, man. And like, it, it just gives me chills to like, think of man, like, like just where I'm at now. And like some, you know, sometimes I just stop and I just think about God, man. And I do it a lot, man. And, and just thank him because I, I kept my word, you know, and, um, 
I got out and I, you know, I don't know if you know about, um, like, like, you know, it was because, you know, we'd have a, a picture of Tupac we painted, but, you know, the story of Tupac, you know, like with Suge Knight came and got him out of jail, you know, and he, you know, promised him he'd do certain, you know, like put out good albums and all that, you know, and that's how it was with me and my relationship with God, man. And he got me out and, you know, and, you know, he blessed me on throughout the way, man. And, you know, I, you know, I got out and I got to work right away, man. And, and, so I got a job for a little while, and then after that, I was like, you know, I remember someone coming up to me in my job office, man, and I was always drawing. I was always drawing in the, like, break room and all that, and he comes up to me, and he goes, you drew that, man? And I go, yeah, and he goes, what are you doing working here? And I, from then <laughs> on, I, yeah, so from then, you know, and I was always, you know, no matter where I went, no matter what I did, I was always drawing. I always had my notepad on me or whatever. So I was drawing on my commutes to work, all that. So, yeah, once that guy told me that, I was like, wait, this, this guy's right, you know, because, and just a lot of the people that believed in me, man, you know, like, like that's, that, that brought me a long way just to know that that guy, that guy was like making, I'm pretty sure that guy was like a millionaire, you know, making great, great money doing what he did. And he would stop by here and there, you know, and, um, and yeah, for to hear him say that, like, get, like, get the hell out of here, you know? So yeah, I quit my job and I quit every, I lived on the streets for a long time, man, to pursue this. So yeah, man. Uh, so you literally suffered for your art. So it's true yeah, when they say that, yeah. right? Yeah. And if it wasn't for the pain, it wouldn't be as good as it is. So I know you had mentioned that a lot of it, it depends on your, on the client, right? The client tells you what they want. So you have this beautiful mural, Babyface. can you put it back up? This, uh, this mural of the Dodgers after they won the 2020, uh, world, uh, world series. And yeah. you got Kershaw, you got Mookie and you got Julio on there. Uh, I mean, it's another gorgeous mural. Are you a sports fan? I mean, a lot, I see a lot of murals of sports figures. Like what is the, imp what do the Dodgers mean to this city or like teams like the Lakers? Man, I mean, they mean a lot. You know, it's like, it's like high school. It's like, we carry ourselves with um that, that team pride rep in LA, you know? So it just, it continues off from the high school stuff, man. You know, like, Oh, you have pride in your high school. And you know, this is more on a bigger stage. We have pride in our city, you know? So um, they're representing us when they're out there playing and all that, you know? And, um, yeah, that means a lot, man. Like I, you know, I'm more of like was more into like um, basketball and stuff like that. Um, uh -huh. And but I never always remember like, man, if you're from LA, you know, like your your parents at least took you to, yeah, they had to at least taking you to one Dodger game when you were a kid, man. You know, like that's like, you know, that's what I remember always remember the Dodgers as going. I went like, would go like probably I've probably been like five times when I was a kid, and then you know I distanced myself from it. You know, just you know with like just like the whole being busy with art stuff and being in and out and, you know, doing just me. But like, I, I would, I took a long break from sports and now that I've got this time to, to do what I do, you know, and enjoy my career and my path in life. Like I, I focus way more on it. So like now I'm glad I could go back to it and give, actually give back to sports too, you know? So, you know, that's really awesome, man. And, you know, it means like a lot, you know, People may not like each other, but if they're like, "Hey, I'm a Dodger fan," I'm a Dodger fan. Like, oh, you know, you know, it could like it could squash beef, you know, or like you know, people <laughs> could be could be cool within that just in within that little time frame, you know, and you know, maybe people be like, "Oh, I actually like this guy. He's a Dodger fan too, or he's a Laker fan too," you know. So, um, yeah, you know, it, it brings unity, man. Like, I love stuff that brings unity with people, man, and that's that's why I love doing what I do as well, you know. Uh, Babyface, can you put up the next uh, mural? I, I wanna, I wanted to go. I mean, you these. If you go, so you have this mural of Harin in Valenzuela, and I think this one you just did on your own wall, right? No, that's uh, one of my customers' backyards. One of my oh wow, yards, man, yeah. Um, so yeah, he he has a whole uh, Laker section, a whole Dodger section, and um, I really hate doing those walls, man. I I hate short walls like that. You know, that's probably like about as tall as us. Uh, little, uh -huh. Like we're a little bit taller, but yeah, man. Um, I, I mean, one of the things that I love is, is, of course, and we had mentioned that you represent people of color, but most importantly, like, like Mexicans, even though Harin's not a Mexican. I mean, we've interviewed yeah, Harin. Yeah. And Harin's like, you know, everybody thinks I'm a Mexican. I'm from Ecuador, you know, but that's hilarious. Like, the, the, the importance of those two guys 
and now I see it with Julio Urias, right? There, a lot of people yeah. are gravitating to Urias, but like guys like Harlin and Valenzuela, did they have any significance for you? Um, you know, like that's like that's more of a young, like I'm still of a younger generation. Yeah. So, um, uh, uh, you know, I just always heard about Venezuela and all that. So, but I, you know, like I said, that was like more of my parents' generation. So, um, you know, I remember like, um, you know, like Piazza and all that, you know, like the nineties like that. And, um, but yeah, you know, we don't get too many great, you know, like I said, Mexicans are kind of like always behind the scenes doing the hard work and all that. So we're not in the spotlight too much. So when they are, you know, people like go, you know, we love it, you know, like, we cheer on our race, you know, our culture and, and everything, man. So I, I love that, you know, that, you know, how it's got you. And then I, I didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know the, uh, that when you that Harin was, the Harin was in Mexican. Yeah. I, I, I felt so stupid because like, yeah. Cause then, you know, that's not my, you know, I, I don't, I'm not too, too fluent with Spanish and all that. So like, yeah, I didn't know him as well as I know Vince Scully, you know? And, yeah. Uh, so yeah, when I remember I posted about that, and people were like, "He's not Mexican." And I'm like, oh, damn, like, damn it, man! Like, you know, I kind of felt stupid, you know. But it's like, you know, which I need to do more, my more of my homework on and stuff, you know, which is fine. With, you know, like, it's hard to take those times to study, sit here and study everybody, you know. Um, but right. yeah, like I just didn't. That wasn't my era too much, really. And you know, of course, I knew Vin. You know, Vin, Vin, Vin is like the fa the voice of LA. You know, I think he'll always be. No matter who comes along, you know, um, you know. So you know, you think LA. I, when I think of LA, I think of like someone talking about LA. I just hear Vin talking about LA, you know. So, um, yeah. So you uh, said you yeah. were a, a, a you were an NBA guy uh, when you were younger. So yeah. does that mean you were a Laker guy, or uh, did you follow other teams? Um, I've always been a basketball fan, and then. Uh, well, of course, but you know, of course, I would always stick with Lakers, you know, and because um, of Kobe and all that. And uh, but you know, I'm I'm all around. Like I just appreciate you know good good basketball and like you know, I just see like any sports. You know, I appreciate any great athlete, but I'm um, you know anything LA I represent, man. You know, um, so and I wanted to you know, keep pushing that, and you know, I want people to be like you know we got some of the best teams and we got the best artists painting the murals, you know. So like we have you know the best of the best out here, you know. So um, yeah. So there's a famous mural that you did that I mean every that's another gorgeous mural and that's the Kobe and Gigi uh mural. Uh how did that come about and like like do you remember when you found out that Kobe when you heard the news about Kobe? Yeah, like, I'll never forget any of that, man. Oh, that's always like someone like close past, you know, like yeah, that, that was like yeah, I'll never forget like I I you know like yeah, I'll never forget any of that, man. Any of that, like just from the minute I woke up, from who texted me to to you know to my roommates coming out and what I was talking about it, and yeah, man, that was like that was crazy, man. Um, that yeah, that was like that was such a deep meaning and story for that, for the, especially that mural. You know, like I remember it was like you know like a lot of people kept telling me like they knew like a lot of people that really like closely know me like you know a lot of people know me but like there's very very like a select few that closely know me know me you know so but everyone like the close homies were like damn what are you gonna do man like like because i was i was i was silent you know for like days about it but i but then i started hunting walls for it and i go i gotta have the perfect location for this man and um somewhere where everyone could cherish and i was out that's that's you know what's crazy man is you know like kobe passed you know i was still doing like alleys I was still doing um, like my graffiti stuff, you know, like, you know, more, of course, legal, like, like we're doing legal walls, but like in alleys, you know, and stuff like that. And I was still practicing my craft. So when Kobe died, man, I just felt a big spiritual thing, man, within, within just the universe, man. Cause it was like, I was practicing all that time. And then when Kobe died, it was like, now the lights on you and all that practice. And now you're on stage, like, your fucking your idol has died like the person you've looked up to the most in any type and i don't really i try not to idolize or like look up to like celebrities or anything too much because they're all people just like us man but like you know but kobe man it was just you know the inspiration i got my hard work i got so much from him man so i just felt like that spiritualness like this is your time now all that practice you do it was like 
you know, like the Karate Kid or something, you know, Mr. Miyagi preparing him <laughs> for all this. And then the ultimate fight was Kobe passing. How are you going to pay tribute to the guy that you, you, you know, like, you know, I didn't have much of father, you know, figures, like nothing like that. So, you know, I had to take what I could from like TV and whatever, you know, and, you know, get my hard work from those people. You know, I always admired like the hardworking athletes and all that, you know. Um, so, you know, I had to, you know, figure that out, you know, and uh, find my own inspiration, good inspiration and not off the streets, you know. So, um, so when Kobe passed, the spotlight was on me, man. And that was all freehand too. Um, and that was a nightmare, man, with the whole city was – that was that, – that time and, like, place, man, I just hope there's more – I know there's a lot of documentation on it, but it was just – that was just crazy, man. And just how, like, how big that mural got. You know, I've had people tell me that's one of the biggest murals of this time. You know, like, you know, everyone knows that mural, you know, and I never thought I would be able to put something out like that, especially for Kobe, man. Like, you know, like, I – I know, like, I, I would hope, you know, like, he's looking and sees that and, like, and sees the respect I paid and, you know, and, and you know, I, I, man, I went, you know, I really went hard on that mural, man. I was on a 20-foot ladder up and down. You know, we had, you know, it was just back and forth, just a headache, you know, just, like, freehanding everything. And so, yeah, man, I just being able to pay that tribute to him, man, was special. And it was, I, that was my kind of introduction to the to the world with my art not just la you know so um that, that was big for me man that was really really big and you worked with other artists on that one right no i do that, um, you that know, one was all you all, all you which one the, the one? kobe one yeah yeah i try not to work with other artists man um yeah i do if you know me like i do everything solo man when it you know, like, especially coming from the graffiti background and all that, man, you get, like, some shady characters in there, man, like, trying to mooch off. Yeah, man, you get some people trying to mooch off of your art and your your hard hustle, and they want to get a piece of it, and, you know, and which is fine, you know, like, but, like, just, you know, if I work with you, you know, like, I, if you're in my circle, you know, I, I, I want to, you know, I, I got to be able to be like, okay, I trust you, you know, whatever it may be. But yeah, like I don't work with a lot of artists, man. I try to do everything by myself, man. Um, you know, just stuff like that. And just, and because I like to, I like to give off my, um, I, when you're working with multiple artists, you got to kind of like work, you know, and I like, I put together projects very well by myself. So, um, but yeah, like that one, yeah, the, everything with that was all me. Um, Right now, I've had, like, I get, like, some of my family members, like, my nephews or whoever pulls up, I'm like, hey, do the yellow, or, like, just simple stuff, you know, like, fill this in, you know, right. I try to, I always try to get people involved, man, especially, like, my family and, like, close friends that don't do art, so if they pull up, I try to put them to work or something, you know, so, you know, because our art, man, is fun, man, everyone loves doing art, you know, so it's kind of therapeutic. So you had mentioned something that you were wall hunting. How hard is it, like, that process to find the space? Because, like, that one that you did with Kobe, it looks like there's indentures in the middle of it. Like, how hard is it to, like, to find good wall space? And then does that change how you decide you're going to do the, the mural? Sometimes. You don't want to, like, a, we don't want a wall that's necessarily going to mess up the image too much. But that uh -huh. wall was good. That wall was good. Yeah, there's those little indentations, like three pillar things in it. But no, it worked out, man. It really worked out. Um, yeah, but you got to you got to pick and choose the walls wisely. Yeah, because like you got to know, like, hey, if, they, if people come to take pictures with it, you know, the sun's gonna be hitting it. You know, you just got to know a proper wall. You know, and over time, you get to, you know, you you study that and you get to you you know it better. You know, so, um, um yeah. But no, that no. The, the the difficulty comes a lot too, yeah. When you're doing stuff like that, but I I don't remember that wall be giving me too much trouble, you know. I just remember just being it's really tall. I don't know if you've seen that one in person, but that, that's a big big painting. Um, yeah, like if I fell from the ladder, I'd be definitely injured, you know. So, but the other night, <laughs> it's just yeah, it was a tall tall painting, man. So, but no, the that wall was good. That wall was really good.
You know, uh, you mentioned the business side of being an artist. Like for the most part, all my friends that are artists have always told me that's what my agents there to protect me from myself, to help me make money. Because as an artist, all you care about is the art. Just leave me alone. Let me do my thing. Do you have representation? Do you have someone that can protect you? Or do you have to be both? You got to be the businessman and the artist. Um, I'm, that's something like, I'm kind of like going through, like I've been going through, you know, just, I'm, it's, I, I'm pretty much like, yeah, I'm the one man team, man. You know, like I got to and it gets super stressful, man. Very, very, very stressful. Um, you know, just dealing with customers, do just doing everything. I'm, you know, like there should be multiple people doing this and running a business with me, but at, for the most part, like I try to train people and all that, but like I said, you got to have driven people, man. You got to have driven people around you at all times to make something work, to make a business work, you know? So, um, finding those driven people and the people who really want that is hard, you know? Um, but you know, like, so as of right now, you know, it's kind of like me, man, the one man team and man, it's been, it's been stressful as hell, man. Very, it's one of the most, like I, a lot of the time, man, I'm like, dude, this shit ain't even worth it. Like I want to, I'll just go back to a regular job, man. Like, cause it gets that bad, man. It gets that bad, you know, like, um, just dealing with people and you know, just everything, man. It, it's a lot. It's a lot, a lot, man. You know, so um, you get a taste of like, especially when you're out doing public stuff, you get a taste of how celebrities, what they go through, and you know, and a lot, you know, um, yeah. So it's just, it's a lot, man. So just dealing with that, and then the business part of it, and you know, it, it's it's a headache, man, and it's very stressful. If you ain't built for that. If you're not built for like like being a one man team, dude, you're gonna you're gonna crumble, man. You need a team which you on board for this, which eventually I hope I find, you know, like the proper team and all that, um, so we could, you know, do, you know, I, I don't have to worry about nothing. I want to pull up and paint. I don't want to worry mm -hmm. about nothing else, you know. I don't want to worry about anything else, man. So you know, it it takes away from the art, you know, and that's why like I wish I could just fucking like I don't like. I just want to paint my life away, man. Just give me food, give me water, and just give me paint, <laughs> and and just give me a canvas, man. And I, I just want to paint my life away. I don't want to worry about nothing, man. You know, um, yeah. So this kind of attention is like a worst nightmare, huh? Like when guys like us come knocking on your door and say, hey, we want to talk to you. That's like the last thing you want to do, right? <laughs> yeah, man, it's cool. It's I think the worst is, man, like so uh, prior to this, like what, like a like, week ago, when all the newscasters hit me up and it was just like, like nothing was, nothing's like prepared, you know, my bad. Sorry about that. Um, nothing's prepared. Um, they just, they call you on the, like, uh, it was like four in the morning and my phone went off and this, the newscaster's like, Hey, I'm at the wall, at the wall. Can you, can you do an interview right now? And I go, dude, it's fucking four in the morning. Like <laughs> what the, like, so we, we and then me, like, like, well, I'm like, okay, well, screw it. I get up, get ready. And we just, you know, we were talking about postponing it so I could, like, get some rest. And then I was like, dude, let's just go, um, you know, and we just smashed out there. And just we were like, screw waiting. Let's just do it. You know, like, but a lot of time when you just jump into stuff like that, you do interviews and you kind of say stuff like kind of sound like a retard, you know. So uh, I just didn't like, yeah, that, that day, man, was just chaotic, man. I didn't get, I think it was over, like, man. Definitely over like twenty four hours, we I didn't sleep, and they just kept wanting to keep going and going with interviews. You know, I just don't like the un, unexpected stuff. You know, like preparing. I always tell them too, it's like, dude, if you just set up a date with me or something, and we get the interview, you get a really great interview. But when you call me on the spot, I'm just gonna, I'm probably gonna be like a dick. Like I'm probably gonna be like, hey, you know, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be nervous too. I'm, I'm, I am human, man. You know, like, like. You know, I got all this all this work going on, and then I got you, like, you know, and I got to smash out over here for you to do this, and, you know, so, yeah, it gets, it's, I always try to tell them, man, if you're going to do an interview with me, set something up good so we can get a good quality interview in, you know, so, um, but, yeah, man, it's, it's stressful, and I, you know, I love doing the interviews, and I, I love doing stuff like this, you know, I, I would definitely, before I pass, I would love to let people know who I am and my story, and, because I really do hope these interviews reach the right people. And, you know, like, you know, you know, with the struggle I've been through in life, man, like I went through the whole foster care system, all that. So I hope these interviews do eventually reach like the right youth and all that, you know, and show them there's 
you know, there's there's light at the end of the tunnel, man, and you believe in yourself, man, you're going to get there, you know, like, so I love doing these interviews, man. I just love putting, like, the story out there because a, lo a lot of people don't know my story, but a lot of people know my work, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, uh, another mural I want to ask you about only because I love this guy. He's one of my favorite players of all time. But when you did this Tony Gwynn, uh, Babyface, can you put up the Tony Gwynn? When you did this Tony <laughs> Gwynn one, I, I know you're about L.A., you know, you are, you're about rep but when they approached you and said, because someone asked you to do this one, right? Or is this your own idea? Yeah, yeah, no, no. Um, I had never been an SD before. And um, my uh, one of my buddies now, you know, a lot of my customers become my friends, man. Um, but a barber out there, Polo, he uh, he had called me and they had seen my work. Well, I think they see my Nipsey or something like that. So they called me out. They're like, you ever been SD? And I go, nah. They're like, never really, like, so... They were like, we got a big ass wall for you. And I was like, perfect. So, you know, like stuff like that. I'm just like, hell yeah, you know. So they, but they told me that's going to be Padres and all that. I'm like, all right, cool. You know, like, I, don't, <laughs> I, I don't get too caught up with all like the, like, you know, I'm loyal to my city. And, you know, but at the end of the day, I would love to like do art for everyone's team, man. And, you know, just, you know, I don't want to be a restricted artist. Like, screw that guy. He's all about LA. He's only <laughs> like, you know, like I'm all about that, you know. But I, I want to know. I want to let know, like other cities and states know. I show the support for them and and what they like too. You know, like I don't want to be a a selfish artist and just you know be LA stuff. You know, but I do. They, you know, that's where I'm from, and that's where I'm gonna hold down to the to the fullest. You know, so yeah. But that that one was crazy. How long does something like this take you? Color is long. Color's long. Color to and if I don't know if you, if you really see one of my color pieces in person that hasn't like hasn't aged and it's mm -hmm. like new and fresh, you see a lot of tones. If you, maybe if you even see some of my videos, I lay tones down that people don't see. You know, greens to break other other tones out. So color takes longer, man. And it's, um, it's colors way different different ball game, man. So you don't see a lot of people putting out those proper color portraits man like they don't catch those tones and so color takes longer um but i'd say like a day like two days it takes me to like for the tony gwen you know oh. um, i move quick man spray can is is revolutionary to art man i used to do brushes and i'm like dude if i did that with a brush i'd i would be wasting my damn time and money and everything <laughs> man so yeah so spray cans is revolutionary man you know to art man and you know i know like the like squares people oh it's He's using a spray can. He must be a, from a gang or you know, like, no, nah, it's revolutionized art, man. And, you know, and making stuff done quicker and, you know, so, but black and gray, like I would have done that Tony Gwynn in a day, man. Really? Uh, yeah. So, let, let me ask you, I was recently at an exhibit of Basquiat in downtown LA and he, uh -huh. I think he was considered more of a street artist, right? When did yeah. that transition go to where street art was recognized as legitimate art and talked in the same standard as like you had mentioned? If I go to a museum and I'm looking at a Picasso or I'm looking at something else, right? Everybody's like, well, this is art. The shit that I see you do on your walls, man, is just as good as the shit that I would see in a museum. So when did that <laughs> recognition come through that, hey, street art is legitimate art? Man, uh, man, that's such a tough question. And like um, just how everything is, especially in L.A., how it is with street art and graffiti. Yeah. You know, like the graffiti writers don't like street art. And then the the street art people don't like it's 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 it's, it's weird man oh, so there's a it's, beef between them it's it's not like you know um it's more you know how la is man and it's like we're we're one of the toughest cities man so it's like you know pay your dues before you start going and decorating walls and stuff man you know um it's like me you know like i've you know i've done out i've i'm super familiar with the graffiti community all that you know i've been there i've done my time i've you know i you know it's before you start getting walls out here, earn some respect out here and, and, and get it the right way, you know, um, you know, because people come from another state and, you know, like then you got people like a lot of stuff like that is like, OK, if you come to L.A. and you're from another spot or even if, even if you're from L.A. and you go over a bunch of graffiti that these guys risk their lives doing and risk their freedom doing and you go over it with some street art, then there's a problem. You came over and got paid to do this. 
And then you went over these guys' stuff when it was like they, they risked their lives to put it there, you know, and you just come and just get the job and get paid and you go over them. That's like, you know, always be cautious and mindful. Like, no matter what I do, anything I do as an artist, I always make sure if there's another artist on that wall, I don't give a damn if it's whack as hell, whatever. I always reach out and like, yo, um, out of all respect, man, like, you know, um, this is what's here. This is what I'm going to be hired to do. If they say no, it's a no. Then I don't touch that. I move on to the next job or whatever, you know, but it's all about that. It's all about respect, you know, and everything like that. So, and, you know, just like paying your dues and all that, but, you know, and but then it gets, you know, people look down so much on graffiti and stuff like that. But then they, but then they could sit here and televise it and put it on clothes, and it's cool for your kids to wear. But like, the minute you know, it's like, but you want to lock us up for it, and then you want to take the culture of it and put it on your shirts and put it in your stores and put it. So it's it's you know, it's really stupid. We live in kind of a really, <laughs> we live in a really dumb world, man. We live in a very crazy damn world, man, and which I don't get, man. You know, so like, and you know, like you know, you got people that talk crap on like graffiti and all that. At the end of the day, man. It's art is art. Art is art, and it comes from the soul, and it's the language of the soul, man. I don't care who you are. Just because it looks a certain way is done with a certain utensil that, it, you know, it's, it's street art. It's not good. You know, it's, it, it, bro, like, you know, go tell, like, the minds that. Go tell people. Go tell the Aztecs that are carved into stuff. Oh, he carved into this building, and now it's, he's a vandal. He's, you know, it's, it's, it's stupid, the people, the, the segregation people put on art. You know, so art is art, and it's all beautiful. Everything is art, man, and you got to learn how to appreciate it, man. Don't put no, you know, you know, it's kind of like racism. Like, oh, I don't like this race because of that. That's that's how you're doing with art when you look against graffiti. It's like when all art is just art. It's like when you're putting races on humans when all humans are just humans. We're all just humans. You know what it's like? It doesn't make sense, you know, to, to objectify one or whatever, you know, it's, it's just what it is, you know, and appreciate it and love it while it's here, you know. So it's crazy, man. It's a crazy subject with stuff like that, man. That's why when you asked that, I was like, oh, man, like, you know, I could go <laughs> on and on about stuff like that, man. Uh, the last one I want to go is, of course, the, the beautiful Selena one that you did. And you had mentioned before, you know, how, like, people do, they want to take your art and put it on shirts and capitalize on it. Yeah. How 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 hard is it? Like when someone come goes up to you, go, "Hey, we want you to do something for Selena. We want you to do something from Nipsey." How hard is it to blur? I mean, does the line blur sometimes between tribute and capitalism, and like maybe taking advantage of these people's image? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Like that's one thing. Like um, man, there's some things I can't really speak on. Um, but. Um, yeah, you know, like, I just, what I do, man, and it's like, one thing I always want to stay true to is, you know, when I put out a piece of art, I'm de I'm definitely studying that person, whether I do know him or don't know him, and I want, I'm really trying to put out the love for that person and getting the feel how the people feel for that person. That's what I'm saying, if, if I don't know them, you know, um, but like the Selena, that's all came from the heart, man, like, that's all, like, you know, when people throw me stuff like I grew up on my childhood, it's like, man, the... The soul for it is there, man. This isn't about, and I'll let everybody know, this is never, this, if you know me, this, this ain't about a buck. This ain't about, you know, like I said, give me give me some food, enough to survive and put, put a roof over my, I don't need all this fancy shit. I don't need all that, you know, as long as I'm doing my art and I'm and I'm, I'm putting that message out in life, I'm happy doing that. And if, I'm, and if I could help Selena's legacy and people like great people like that live on through with my art, and promote them that's all that matters to me i don't give a damn like of course we need money to survive and pay our rent keep a roof overhead and stuff like that but at the end of the day whether you i don't give a damn you'll catch me doing this shit to the day i die regardless of money regardless of, you know and and like i said i i like painting greats man and you know um um you know what i like doing as well before i was doing this i was painting a lot of people who passed like on canvases for funerals and stuff like that so you know I just hear one. I just want to put pay tribute to people, man. And like, I don't like me. Yeah, when all the t-shirt stuff comes in, man, that's why you don't, you haven't seen me drop too much anything merchandise, man. You know, I'm not trying to capitalize on any tragic situations, you know, but at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you know, you got like, I'm not trying to down nobody, badmouth anybody, anything like that, you know, but every company's out here doing, you know, like, 
like how do you you know like when kobe passed there's so many magazines that came out about it you know when selena passed, there's magazines you know there's you know there's shirts of her you know but at the end of the day you gotta like it, it's oh, that's a very hard one a hard line to draw because at the end of the day too it's like you do want i do want my like little girls i do want my nieces and nephews rocking selena shirts you know and promoting that proper stuff to you know you know it's it's a very honestly man that's a line i don't really like to discuss but i just know what i do and i can speak for myself and i love the art and i love paying tribute to people man and like i would say i was i'm more like a tribute artist man because i put together very great tributes you know um um and all my other art is kind of like like vulgar and like it's you know like i don't know if you see if, if you look at some of my other art like i go crazy in my mind and like i do some very inappropriate stuff but like all to what the community likes and people like is the tributes you know but I try, I try my best not to like sit here and as and use it as a money thing, but like I said, if I'm if someone's like, hey man, and the community wants shirts of mine, like, hey, I'm gonna put out those, like, I'm not gonna sit here and try to like tax everyone for the shirts, you know, I'm gonna try to get them those shirts, but at the same time, I still need to get paid for the shirt quality and everything. I still gotta pay people to do it, you know. So um, you know, sucks. Nothing's free in the world, man. But you know, but I just know everything I do comes based out of love, man, and you know, like. Um, you know, I'll always be out here doing this for the people, working with the people, man. Like, I don't ever want to be Mr. Hollywood or nothing like that, man. You know, like, um, you know, I know a lot of celebrities. I've been to celebrities' houses, and you know, um, but I don't really care about that, you know. Like, I care about, you know, just I care about making history with my art while I'm here, man. I don't want to be the the richest artist in the world or nothing like that. And, and you know, I, I just want to I just want to let people know my soul's alive and it's here and it's you know, impactful to people. And I'm trying my best to be a good influence and, you know, put out great stuff, man. And, and do art just for love, man, because, you know, you, you can't, art's about love. You know, I say it's the language of the soul. You can't talk to the soul about money, you know, like, <laughs> you know, say, like, so, you know, but I love, I love this, you know, I love what I do, man. But yeah, I don't, I don't try to capitalize on bad situations, man, but that Selena one is, everyone loves that Selena. So we're going to probably recreate that one soon too. I, that's great. Look, I want to thank you for all the time you've given us, Slow. I really enjoyed the yeah. conversation. We're going to end the show the way we always end the show. We refer to the show as the carne asada because it's just us <laughs> hanging around, just talking to yeah. our guests, right? So we yeah. do a little, we have a little series here that we end the show on called our kickback questions. These are quick questions. You can give me quick answers, or if you want to elaborate on them, by all means, do it. Um, have you met any of these celebrities that you've maybe done a mural from? Have they given you any feedback on like what the mural is like? I, I saw Danny Trejo tweeted about the Bellflower uh, mural. Have you had any experiences like that with your subjects? Um, well, yeah, we did the 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 Super Bowl with Vanessa Bryant. Um, so she, you know, she's pretty much Kobe, you know, you know. Yeah. So, uh, but that that. Um, Nip, well, you know, Nipsey's people, Nipsey's people reached out to me and I've done a bunch of their studios and all that. Um, you know, but a lot of you, you got to think I'm doing a lot of tributes too, you know, so I'm not meeting a lot of the actual people. Yeah. You know? Um, but their families, like that's the best, that's dope. That's super dope. Like the families and, you know, the crews they were with and all that. That's awesome. Uh, we're big wrestling fans on this show, so we're curious oh. if you ever grew up w watching wrestling. Were you a fan of wrestling, or were you one of those people that are like they poo poo it and they're above wrestling? Oh man, I fucking love wrestling. <laughs> I love wrestling, man. <laughs> man, I used to, you know, you know. Of course, everything, you know, everything in the '90s was dope. Everything in the '90s was dope, man. So the early 2000s was 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 classic, you know, Stone Cold and versus The Rock and all that stuff, man. And, you know, like Serena Carne Asada, and I want to have a Carne Asada one day when we just watch nothing but the old school wrestling, man. They, they had such <laughs> they had such great storylines, man. Like, I just remember remember Vince McMahon always like anywhere he went, Stone Cold was there. That would be in Taco Bell and, and fucking <laughs> Stone Cold. <laughs> Stoke will be dressed up as a damn worker and just come and beat his ass. Like, man. like that shit was funny, man. I watched some of those storylines. Wrestling's the shit, man. We so you were a fan of the attitude. You were a fan of the attitude era then, huh? Yeah, yeah. Smackdown and yeah, man. Man, hell yeah. 
All right, last one. Uh, so we're about the Dodgers. We're about L.A. on this show, but we're also about the cultura and specifically tacos. We love tacos on this show. So yeah. we want to know what is your favorite taco and where do you go in the city to get that taco? Damn. Oh, I go everywhere, man. Oh, that's hard <laughs> to say. That's, that's, that's a hard one, man. If you know L.A., you know there's a ton of spots, man. Oh. Uh, a couple spots is a uh, Cuatro Viento, you know, if you want them fish tacos, uh, we go there a lot. Uh, damn. Uh, what is it, tacos? Uh, El Carbon and, uh, on Atlantic. Yeah. Uh, you know about that one, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, so I'm more like, I just like, uh, I just like good quality pastor. Um, oh, man, there's just trucks. I forgot their name, man, but... Uh, I'm big on the pastor, but like it looks like tri tip, man. Like the way yeah. they cut it looks like it doesn't even look like like pig. Um, I forgot what trucks it's called, man. Um, I think it's hard either. to find. I think it's hard to find good al pastor. So yeah. If, yeah. If, you so, could, if you could think of one, if you let me know because I struggle to find good pastor. Yeah, man. I'm uh, I'm gonna send you one through Insta, man. <laughs> but it's I always go to them. Um, I can't remember their name, but they're in NoHo. They're in a couple spots, but yeah, they. The pastor looks like like um, like tri tip, like thin thinly sliced tri tip, man. Like uh, even when I seen it, I go, "You should have seen like steak, like." So, um, but it's um, <laughs> it's 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 fire, man. So those I go to with the pineapple. Um, yeah, I gotta have that with pineapple. But like fish tacos and the pastor tacos, man, is like it in LA, man. But you gotta know where to go. Like you gotta know where to go, man. Absolutely. Well, slow. This has been a lot of fun for us, man. I really appreciate thank it. You, Can't thank you enough. You, you're super talented, man. I and I appreciate you. you emphasize your work ethic because I think that's the difference, right? You got my Mamba mentality, man. When it, when it yeah, comes to yeah. your artwork, and uh, so can you let our listeners know where they can follow you on the social media? Um, you can follow me on. Uh, slow motions on Instagram, S L O E underscore motions. Um, TikTok, like, lock me out. So I had a TikTok, but <laughs> yeah. I, I, man, I, I stay, I stay within my lines, man. I don't have a Facebook, nothing like that, man. Okay. You catch me on Instagram or you catch me in the public, man, because I'm out there a lot. All right. So there you have it. We want to thank Slow again for uh, check out his murals all over the city. We'll post them on on our social medias because they're they're beautiful pieces of art. Uh, Slow again, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much. Took a while to get this done, but we got it done, man. (laughs) That's right. Thank you, guys, man. And a big thank you once again to Slow Motions uh, for joining us on the show. We've we've always wanted to have a, a show devoted to the street art in Los Angeles, so we're very thankful that Slow came on. Babyface, um, what was your biggest takeaway from uh, from what Slow had to say? Um, just, um, I mean, it's pretty like like you were discussing. It's pretty amazing, like how some of that artwork looks. Right, it looks so realistic, like it's a. Uh, like on a canvas or something, right? And he's doing this just with spray paint and like on, on walls, right? And as you know, like, you know, you go touch your house wall, your wall, like your wall, they're not smooth surfaces, right? You no. got all the textures and all these things on there. And still you look at some of those, those images, like the van and the, the Kobe's, like they look like, like a picture, right? You know, there's the shadows, there's like, you know, if there's like wrinkles on the face, like he gets all that stuff in there. And I mean, it's pretty incredible to see that. Right. Like it, I mean, it really is like a, a work like art, right? Yeah. It, it, it's straight up is art. Um, first of all, I'm jealous of the guy who got Harin and Valenzuela painted on his backyard. I, I mean, how cool would that ha- be to have that in your backyard? But you're right, it is art. And that's why I think what's happening in Bellflower just really sucks. Just to give an update to our listeners, um, they had a petition where they initially needed 7,000 signatures, 7,500 signatures, in order to appeal the decision with the city of Bellflower. Um they are up to 20,000 as of this week, uh, Sunday. They were up to 20,000 signatures. If they get to 25,000 signatures, I think they're going to ha- have the most signatures for that type of petition on change.org. So uh, the word is out. A lot of people, if you haven't seen the mural, 
it, you can go see it in person. It is very impressive. There's pictures of it online. We will post the pictures online. Um, so it, it does suck because you're right, baby face. I think it's our art. I don't think it's any different than anything that's hanging in a museum. And the fact, even if they do get to keep, because the latest update is that the mayor of Bellflower is working with the business. Uh, so that's Speedy Auto Tent Shop is the business that owns the wall where the mural is painted on. Um, the mayor and Speedy Tent are working on this. Hopefully they can come to a resolution. But what's going to suck is it's probably going to cost Speedy Auto Tent money to keep that mural up. And they already spent money to create the mural. And the fact that they're going to have to probably pay more money because these appeals cost money. I know they started a GoFundMe account to pay for the legal fees uh, for these appeals. So it just sucks that this beautiful piece of work is it's going to cause them. They're going to have to pay money to keep it up when I, I just think. It's absolutely the ordinance is ridiculous. It, the, I, I, it'd be different if it was something that was. I mean, it pays tribute to the city of Los Angeles. It'd be different if this was a mural that was derogatory or if it was obscene or anything like that. Then, yeah, I get it. But this is just paying tribute to a lot of people. I thought it was interesting um, that Slow was just like, you know, if it was maybe just a mural of Vince Scully and maybe other people that look like Vince Scully, would there be a problem? Uh, but um, I, I digress. But uh, it's that's the latest update. If any of you are interested, you can go look up the petition on change.org. If you want to contribute to the GoFundMe account to help them with their legal fees, by all means, uh, I'll I'll put that link up on on my social media. Um, Babyface, were you going to say something? So the issue is right. You think because it's facing the street, right? That's the issue, yeah. right? It's it's a main street that there that the auto tint is facing. No. So if they would have had that mural facing another wall on the site, so it wasn't facing directly to the uh, to the street, there'd be no problem. Now, is that just a bellflower thing? Or because, like, I, I know, like, I was at the game, right, and driving up, like, Sunset to Dodger Stadium. There's murals as you drive up Sunset, right, that are facing the street. There's stuff on the walls there. Like, so why is, is it just bellflower or? I, it, it might be. I'm, uh, but who knows? There might be other cities that have those same ordinances like bellflower. Uh, but with the number of murals that are in Los Angeles, I'm I'm sure that the city of Los Angeles doesn't have that code, that municipal code. So maybe this will lead to them changing that code, because like I said, it's ridiculous. And anybody who has seen that mural, it is a beautiful piece of art that celebrates Los Angeles. Now, if they have problems with the content on in that mural, that's a different story. And that's something that I think everybody is is walking around. They're not really saying it. And maybe they're not saying it because they're still in negotiation with the city. They don't want to piss off the city. They want to keep the mural. But I'm, uh, I'm sure sooner or later something's going to come out. Well, what is the problem with this mural? If it's just because it's facing a main street like that, maybe it's time we revisit this code and rewrite the code. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it it doesn't. I mean, you want it facing the street, right? Obviously, because you yeah. want people to see your 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 something that you've added to your your location, right? I, I, absolutely. So um, that's going to do it for this episode. For those of you who have just found us on YouTube, make sure you're subscribed to the YouTube channel. You can catch up on all of our episodes, past interviews that we have had. Uh, for those of you listening on audio, make sure you're subscribed to the podcast so you can get notifications whenever we drop our new episodes. You can find us wherever you listen to your favorite podcasts. Yo ha sido su servidor, Juan Ramirez, de parte de mi colega Babyface. Nos vemos para la próxima. This episode of the Believe Those Podcast has been brought to you by betonline.ag, where the game starts. Thank you.